I'm James McClatchy. I came to California like so many others to find my fortune in gold. Instead, I made my mark as the editor of the Sacramento Bee, recording the stories of the great people of this fine city. It's wonderful to be back in Sacramento during the most glorious time of the year. I can't tell you how much I yearn for the traditions of old, the visions of Christmas trees, sugar plums, and candy canes dancing in my head. Now, if you'd all be so kind, I'd like to take you back to a time when this area was known as Sacramento City. It was a young and bustling town on the edge of the frontier. It was an exciting time in the new state of California. Sacramento was recovering from the great floods of 1861 and 62. In fact, one of the greatest engineering achievements of the time was accomplished when the very streets you're standing on and the buildings you're surrounded by were lifted an entire floor to save the city from the threats of future flooding. Sacramento was a busy and diverse commercial center filled with people from all over the globe, like me in search of gold and new opportunities. In fact, you could have walked down these very streets and heard almost any language in the world being spoken. One of those travelers was a fellow journalist writing for the Sacramento Union. I knew him as Sam Clemens, but you may remember him as Mark Twain, perhaps our nation's greatest storyteller. I'll let him take over. Why, thank you, McClatchy. <coughs> You know, Sacramento City was a rough and tumble place in those days. In fact, I called this place the City of Saloons. Back then, Sacramento City was a friendly place, you know. A place that loved to celebrate. Probably on account of all those saluted in Syria. It was one of John Sutter's favorite hotels to frequent. Now, if you'll turn your attention back to the other side of the street, When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Look, it's Santa! Little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they gave. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. No Dasher, no Dancer, no Prancer and Dixon. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly. When they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my hand and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. That's more like it. His dimples, how merry! His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. 
His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. Ho, ho, ho! Ho, 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 ho! He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him, in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work. Hmm. It sure is dark out there. Uh, I think these old buildings could use just a little more holiday cheer. with a jerk and laying a finger on the side of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose he sprang to his sleigh to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle but he exclaim ere he drove out of sight happy Christmas Here's a gift to all of you from your 